I've noticed that in running, you really have to be patient and it helps to love the sport because it took me until I was 28 years old to reach uh, world championships. And you know, I've been running since I was 15. That's a long time. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Yolanda Garambe. I'm a professional runner and I hold the Swedish national record in the indoor mile. Uh, so I'm from Sweden, but I live in Atlanta, Georgia and I run for Mizuno and the Atlanta Track Club Elite Team. I've always loved running uh, ever since I was a kid. It was something I liked to do, but I didn't start training for track until I was 15 years old. And then after high school, I um, moved to the US and I went to the University of Vermont on an athletic scholarship. But then I moved to Atlanta um, where I joined the Atlanta Track Club Elite. There's probably been economical challenges when I turned pro, but also injuries. Track and field isn't a sport that has a lot of money if you compare it to maybe American football, which I knew going into this field to being a professional runner. So for a while I wasn't making any money and then for a while I was making some money, but you know, not enough to pay rent or food. Those were real challenges, challenges I faced because when you're in your 20s and you decide to pursue running, you would hope that you can survive on it and I couldn't for a while. But I was lucky that I had people who let me live with them and my parents would let me, you know, stay at home for free and stuff like that. So I lived with my coaches, with some other athletes for a few years, actually. And it's only now in recent years that I've been able to make enough money to, you know, be able to uh, support myself independently. But my other big challenge that I faced so far was a knee injury I had in 2017. I never had a big injury before, so I didn't really know honestly how to handle it. There were moments when I thought, what if I never can get this injury to heal? Um, we worry about what if you know I could start running again and then I never would get back to the level that I was at before because right before I got injured, I had reached a new level in my running. And I think I was 25, 26. Um, which is a very young age. But sometimes as an athlete, there are a lot of people who are really good when they're young. So when you're 25, 26 and you don't feel like you have proven yourself yet, uh, you start you start feeling old. So that was another stressor. But uh, thankfully, I my injury healed and I became better after my injury. You know, facing an injury is hard and it's okay uh, to be upset with that because I felt like I lost my identity during that time because, you know, I'm 25, 26. I was making $2,000 a year. <laughs> so yes, I couldn't support myself and now I'm injured. So I couldn't even run, which made me feel like every day was just not a waste, but I didn't know what to do with myself because if I would ever get injured again in this, to the same extent. I have tools now that I can work with how to you know, stay happy and try to move forward and just get healthy without, you know, hitting some really low mentally. So first of all, I think it helps that I have a schedule. It's a self-made schedule because when you're a professional runner, many times you have a few practices a week, but a lot of things you have to do on your own. But what gets me out the door and actually and still makes you know makes me excited on those days I don't really want to go out there maybe it's pouring rain or something I think about my goals and what I want to do because what drives me is racing and competing even during times like this um, with COVID we had a lot of cancelled races I know that at some point I will be competing and when that day comes I want to be ready other than thinking about my goals, I always make sure that I enjoy my training, having fun with it, at the same time as I'm really serious about it. 
keeps me, you know, wanting to go out there and run. And I also am grateful that this is my full-time job. So it might also be to practice gratefulness. A big thing that I wish someone had told me was, was to remind me that I shouldn't compare myself to other athletes. It's very easy when you really are striving for something and you see someone else reaching your, you know, your goals to start comparing yourself. Why, you know, in different ways, why can't I do that? Or she has this, I don't have that, something like that. And I think that I've learned now to not compare myself because everyone has a different path. When I was younger, sometimes I would think, you know, in the back of my head, that, you know, I'm 20 years old and I wish I was running as fast as these other athletes. Another thing that I wish someone had told me was that I was gonna meet a lot of people who wouldn't understand uh, my goals or who maybe wouldn't believe in me. A lot of times during my career, I have listened to people who have in some ways discouraged me from my goals, but I've learned there's so many people, especially when you dream big, you're gonna meet so many people who are gonna kind of question you and they maybe won't do it outright. Just say a little comment like, Ooh, wow, are you really gonna try to do that? Stuff like that. And I, and I just wish that I knew going into this that I was gonna meet so many of those people and even coaches that you respect. Um, don't listen to them. Um, and that's something it, that took me a long time to understand that I just needed to just kind of like block the haters, just focus on, the, on what I want to do and surround myself with people who also believe I can do it and just go for it. The last thing that I wish someone would have talked to me about was how to deal with an injury actually, because I didn't understand how tough that was. Um, when I was injured and I felt really upset, I got worried about my feelings. I thought, why am I so sad about this? And I wish someone had told me that if you get injured, it's gonna be really tough mentally and you might have, you know, these emotions, X, Y, Z, la la la. You might think all these things um, and have doubts and worries about your comeback, uh, but it's okay. reach out to a lot of schools actually i think i emailed maybe 40 schools or something and i just asked them about the scholarship and thinking back i should have, should have worded my emails a bit differently but i didn't understand how big of a deal it was to get a scholarship then i got a scholarship at the university of vermont and i spent four years there uh, you know everything paid for uh, and that really helped me because um four years of training and you know i was supported economically by the school other resources has been my support system uh, family friends coaches uh, as an athlete especially when you're a runner it's an individual sport but you can have a team so it's more in recent years i've realized how important that team is you can have a team around you that's positive and believes in you that's how you make it I think, uh, or that's at least how you have, you know, a long career. So, you know, it's so much up here. You can train all you want, but if you don't believe in what you can do, you probably won't do it. <laughs> um, but if you believe, I think you can outdo yourself. You can outdo things that you never thought you could do. And that's my experience. And I think the people around me for that, my closest circle. Because the days that I didn't believe in myself, that they believed in me. Make sure you're surrounded by positive and good people who have your best interest in mind, because that's gonna help you. And I think that is one of the, the biggest reasons why I can be here today and say I have done this this and this and I'm still running at this age yeah I hope you enjoyed that and
thank you for tuning in. Bye.